no one. <clears throat> now we've got the lineup. Mr. Prakam Bhushan has said four hours. Mr. Sibyl, four hours. I, I have to lay out the factual details also. So that's why I will take, I will a... take four hours. Mr. B Mr. Bhushan, you will also four hours will be too long because you know we have to cut short the the laying out of factual details itself will take over an hour. Otherwise, my argument should not take more than two and a half hours. Max. You can cut, cut it down to about two hours so that you know we'll. I'll try. I'll yeah. try. Within I'll two hours, just uh, I'll then you can supplement it. I'll try. First of all, Lord, I wish to say that this is a case which goes to the very root yeah. of our democracy. Yes. And I'm glad, my lord, that the court has finally fixed it for hearing and constituted a constitution bench, given the importance of the case. Lord, I have been in the PIL space for many years, but I have never seen this kind of public interest involved in any PIL that I have ever done. I mean, the amount of interest that this has aroused is absolutely astounding. Lord, there are, <clears throat> I'll just show your Lordship what the electoral bond scheme is. By this petition, my Lord, we have this, I am appearing for ADR, and we have filed written submissions, which are in volume one, and start at page one. We have, uh, in our written submissions, my Lord, mentioned uh, that we are challenging, in our petition also, we are challenging the amendments brought in FCRA by the Finance Act of 2016. So first, the Lord, in 2016, and the issue about whether they could have been brought through the Finance Act or not, I am not pressing right now, though we have taken that issue in our petition, but I am not pressing it for the reason that I want this case to be decided before the elections. I don't want, because I know that your Lordship has issued the finance bill issue to a seven judge bench, and I don't want this to await that. So I'm restricting myself to the other grounds of challenge. So first, my Lord, we have challenged the finance, the amendments brought to the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act of 26 uh, by the finance act of 2016 and in essence my lord those amendments were that prior to that amendment we have actually in our written submissions my lord we have given a chart of the amendments uh, and the amendment regarding the fcra is at page 10. Uh, i'm sorry generally my lord we don't interrupt but by a judicial order, my lords have been pleased to separate and detag the issue regarding FCRA. There is a judicial order passed by your lordships. No, my lord. Just, lord he has started with that, my lord. That's why it's. I am just pointing out what order. we have challenged in this petition. If your lordship just sees, in this petition, which is before your lordship today, we have challenged the amendments made to the FCRA also by way of the finance bill of 2016. And the amendment was that prior to that, the, uh, the foreign contributions were prohibited to political parties and candidates and public servants. By this amendment, they have effectively permitted foreign contributions by saying, that any contribution made by way of donation uh, to, through a subsidiary of a foreign company, which is registered in India, will not be treated as a foreign source. So by this amendment, effectively, you have allowed, so for example, my lord, suppose, I'm just giving an example, a foreign company wanted to donate money to a political party. It was earlier totally prohibited from doing so. And in fact, one of these cases went to the, in fact, this amendment was 
in a way brought in order to overcome a judgment of the Delhi High Court by which the Delhi High Court held that both the BJP and the Congress party had received foreign contributions through a subsidiary of a foreign company. At that time, it was Sterlite, which was a subsidiary of Vedant Resources, which was a UK-based company. And they said that, therefore, appropriate action should be taken against these political parties. To overcome that, the Lord, a retrospective amendment was brought through the Finance Act into FCRA by saying that if the donation is made by a subsidiary of a foreign company, in that case also that was a subsidiary, Sterlite was a subsidiary of Vedant Resources UK, <laughs> then that will not be treated to be a foreign source. Mm -hmm. So this is the amendment which has been brought and we have mentioned this, my lord, at page, uh, at page 10 of our written summary. That has, strictly speaking, no relevance to the challenge on the electoral bond scheme. True, true. But I am only saying that... that Which is perhaps why the solicitor mentioned that... Yes. But, that but had been detailed. That, that issue was the bond scheme. Segregation of three cases. 31st of January, 23 order. Your lordships, my lord, were pleased to segregate. In this, my lord, the original amendment of 20, uh, brought in by the Finance Bill of 2016 to the FCRA has been challenged. Right. What is the next challenge in your petition? We'll just at least have a broad yes, purview yes. and then we can go yes, on to yes. the... So the challenges are all uh, in this chart, if your lordship just sees. Page 10. Page 7, volume 1, page 7, in our written submissions. Yes. So first is the... Amendment made to the Representation of People Act. <clears throat> Earlier, my lord, the Act said, 29C, on the left side is the original and the right side is the amendment, amended. Earlier, my lord, the Act said, RP Act said, the treasurer of a political party or any other person authorized by the political party in this behalf shall each in each financial year prepare a report in respect of the following, namely, A, the contributions in excess of 20,000 rupees received by such political party from any person in that financial year, B, the contribution in excess of 20,000 rupees received by such political party from companies uh, other than government Mr. companies Bhushan, in that financial year. page 10. Pardon, Lord? You are at page 10. Page 10. At the bottom, the seven, seven, sorry, seven, sorry, seven, seven. I'm sorry, page seven. Page ten was that FCRA I was had taken the one. Page seven. Yes, please. So left side is the original provision. And then my Lord Poor said, where the treasurer on the left side, original where the treasurer of any political party or any other person authorized by the political party in this behalf fails to submit a report under subsection 3, then notwithstanding anything contained in the Income Tax Act, such political parties shall not be entitled to any tax relief under that Act. Because contributions to political parties are exempted at both ends. That is, it's uh, exempted at the end of the party which receives the donations from tax, and it is also exempted at the end of the uh, donor. That is, the donor can claim an exemption by way of the donations that they have given to a political party. Now, your lordship will see the amendment. I have highlighted the relevant part. Provided on the right side, provided that nothing in this subsection shall apply to contributions received by way of electoral bond. So, therefore, the reporting requirement as to who has donated to you in excess of 20,000, which was earlier there, has been removed for donations received through electoral bonds. This is the first amendment to the Representation of People Act. Then they amended simultaneously the Companies Act. All these amendments were brought in through the Finance Bill of 2017, Finance Act of 2017. Now the Companies Act. 182 originally prescribed, notwithstanding anything <clears throat> contained in any other provision, a company other than a government company and a company which has been in existence 
for less than three financial years may contribute any amount directly or indirectly to a, any political party, provided that the amount referred to in subsection one as the case may be, the aggregate of the amounts that may be so contributed by the company in any financial year shall not exceed, this is important, shall not exceed seven and a half percent of its average net profits during three immediately preceding financial years. So there was a limit, there was a cap of seven and a half percent of last three years average profits on the amount of corporate donations that any uh, that any company could give to a political party. That proviso has been omitted by this amendment. So this is another uh, thing other than electoral bond. Simultaneously, in Lord, a slew of changes were made. One was, and all these have been challenged in our petition. Then, my Lord, uh, 182.3, every company shall disclose in its annual profit and loss account any amount or amounts contributed by it to any political party during the financial year to which the account relates, giving particulars of the total amount contributed and the name of the party which has, uh, to which such amount has been contributed. So earlier the requirement was that you have to disclose which political party you have donated to. Now, my lord, <clears throat> in the amendment they say, provided every company, uh, now they say every company shall disclose in its profit and loss account the total amount contributed to it under this section during the financial year to which the account relates, provided that a company may make contribution through any instrument issued pursuant to the scheme notified under the Act for the time being in force for contribution to political parties. So therefore, now, after the amendment, all that they have to disclose is the total amount, not the Doni political party. They don't have to disclose which is the political party to whom they have given these electoral bonds. Earlier, there was a requirement to disclose that. Then, Income Tax Act, this has also been amended by this. I read it, I read it. Then, Lord, Income Tax Act. So, earlier, 13A said, any income of a political party which is chargeable under the head income from house property, income from other sources or income by way of voluntary contributions received by a political party from any person shall not be included in the total income of the previous year of such political party. And then proviso said, provided that. Yes such party, such political party keeps and maintains such books of account or other documents as would enable the assessing officer to properly deduce its income there, therefrom be in respect of each such voluntary contribution in excess of 10,000 rupees, such political party keeps and maintains a record of such contributions and names and addresses of the person who have made the contribution. So therefore, there was a requirement in the Income Tax Act that every political party should maintain accounts of where they have received the donations from, who has given them the donations. Now, by the amendment, it says, provided, proviso says, provided that <clears throat> B, in respect of each such voluntary contribution, other than contribution by way of electoral bond, in excess of 10,000, such party keeps and maintains record of such contribution and the name address and address of the person who has made such contribution. So again, the requirement of keeping a record is omitted for electoral bonds. And then, my lord, D, no donation exceeding 2,000 rupees is received by such political party otherwise than by account pay check drawn on a bank or an account pay draft or use of electronic clearing system through a, a bank account or through electoral bond. So everywhere, my lord, electoral bonds 
have been not only introduced, they have been exempt from disclosure under the uh, Companies Act, under the Income Tax Act, under the Representation of, of People's Act, etc. And then, my lord, at page 10, this is, of course, the Reserve Bank. Reserve Bank Act only says that this, this will be a new financial instrument which has been introduced. Issue of demand bills and notes. And here it says uh, the amendment at three says, notwithstanding anything contained in the section, the central bank may authorize any scheduled bank to issue electoral form. <clears throat> at the bottom of page 10 towards. And then as I said, my Lord, in the FCRA, which has also been challenged in this petition, now, prior to the amendment of 2016, this is important for the reason that when I make my argument as to what this view of amendments has done, it has, on the one hand, my Lord, introduced an opaque instrument by which nobody can come to know other than the government. It is only the government who may be able to come to know as to who has contributed to whom, because under the scheme, State bank has to issue the electoral bond. So state bank has a record of who has purchased which electoral bond. Now, of course, the bonds are bearer bonds. They are freely transferable. So suppose I purchase the bond. State bank will know that, yes, I have purchased this bond. But I can hand it over to somebody else. And that somebody else can give it to a political party. The political party also may not come to know who has donated political party. It's open for a political party to say that, well, we opened our office in the morning and we saw these 100 crores of electoral bonds lying under our, under our door. We deposited these electoral bonds. We don't know who has given them. But these are bearer bonds. So therefore, all that the political party will disclose in their accounts would be that out of the total contributions that they have received, donations that they have received, they have received 500 crores by way of electoral bonds. That they have received total 700 crores out of which 500 crores are from electoral bonds. That's all. But that match of who purchased this electoral bond and which party and cash this particular electoral bond, that match, if at all, it can only be done by the state bank, which is a government of India institution. Of course, state bank is also effectively prohibited from disclosing it. But the scheme says that if a law enforcement agency needs to know this, get this information, it may ask the state bank to disclose this. So if at all, only a law enforcement agency, which are all essentially controlled by the government, or the government itself, because it controls the state bank, can come to know only this much, that this particular bond was purchased by this company, and this was encashed by this party. But nobody else can come to know this information under the scheme of electoral bonds. Nobody else. They are not even the election commission because the only account that is submitted to the election commission by the political party is this, that we receive so much by way of electoral bonds. They are not obliged to disclose who gave them. In fact, they may even say we don't know who gave it. We opened our office. It was lying under the door. We encashed it. So therefore, they may even turn around and say that. In fact, there is an interim order of this court in this very case by which this court said that all political parties should disclose the donors of these electoral bonds to the election commission pending the hearing of this case. There is an interim order to that effect. But when that information is finally seen, I dare say, my lord, that some of these political parties would have said, we don't know. We don't know.
still on the SBI uh, issuing bonds uh, to persons who are not residents in India? Uh, yes, the requirement is that they have to give a KYC, whoever purchases electoral bonds. So the identity of the person who purchases the electoral bonds will be known to the State Bank of India. But, but because they have now opened the route by uh, making this amendment that uh, the limit of 7.5% of the annual profits has been totally removed. So even if you are a loss-making company or even if you are a company which does no business, just a pure shell company, let's say, my lord, your lordship is aware that in that uh, Adani Sebi matter, they are saying, Sebi is saying, we don't know who are, whether these companies who have invested in the Adani companies from Mauritius and from these tax havens, whether they are in fact owned by Adani or not, or whether they are related to Adani or not. Now it is open to any of these companies to set up a subsidiary in India and donate to any political party of their choice 